wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'd no ayyul ahbab that if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala test you with something that there is no relief except with with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you and blesses you with something that no one can remove it unless with the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and there is so much dalil and evidence from the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to illustrate this for us. So ayil ahbab tawakal ala Allah, rely on Allah, put your trust in Allah, worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, biyadihi al-khayr. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, fi kitabihi al-kareem, wa im yamsasku allahu bidurrin fala kashifa lahu illa huwa. When yamsaska bi khayrin fuhu ala kulli shayin qadir. Allah tabarak wa ta'ala says, fi kitabi al kareem. And if Allah touches you with harm, none can remove it but He. And if He touches you with good, then He is able to do all things. And this is uh, Suratul, uh, Suratul An'am, uh, verse 17. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes clear for us. And if Allah touches you with harm, none can remove it but He. And if He touches you with good, then he is able to do all things. Imam Sa'di, rahimahullah ta'ala, mentioned some of the fawaid about this verse or some of the general benefits about this verse as well as some of the uh, verses surrounding this verse. He said that this, these verses, uh, in these verses, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes clear for us guidance. He clarifies guidance. And he uh, belittles uh, shirk and that he, the Almighty, shows that he is the creator of all things and that all of his creation from mankind and from the jinn and from the angels and the animals and the uh, things that are uh, non, that possess no movement and, and, and so forth, that all of these things were planned out by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that all, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, out of his greatness, he is over all things. And he is the, all of this is a part of his mulk, his dominion. And then the Sheikh says, he says, is it possible uh, or is it correct from the intellect or even from the religious text that a person would worship any of those things uh, th that are owned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that do not gain, give uh, benefit with him, nor do they cause harm and leave off sincerity to the creator, the planner, the owner, the one who gives, uh, who gives benefit and causes harm, causes, th causes harm to take place? Is this from the, uh, a healthy intellect and from a straight uh, nature, fitra, fitra, that so this ayat, it, it calls us to have sincerity in our ibadah to Allah and love for Allah and fear of Allah and hope for, for the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in another tafsir, Sheikh Jazairi, Abu Bakr al-Jazairi, have the Allah Ta'ala, and may Allah bless us in Him and forgive us in, in Him for any shortcomings that we may possess. The Shaykh said also in regards to the same ayat, he said that this ayat here, that, that anything with regards to any of those trials and things that Allah, uh, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and if Allah touches you with harm, none can remove it but he. And if he touches you with good, 
and he is able to do all things. Sheikh Abu Bakr al-Jazairi, Allah Ta'ala, he said that if Allah tests you with something or causes something to happen to you that is harmful to your body, then there is no one or nothing that can remove that except Him. And if He gives you khair, He gives you something good, and He wants for you good, then no one is able to increase that good. فَهُوَ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٍ And He is over all things omnipotent. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Shaykh also mentioned that this uh, verse was addressing the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But however, it's also general in its meaning. To anyone that no one can remove their harm except Allah. And no one can increase their fadl or their, their, their benefit or their good except Allah. And this is why then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَهُوَ قَاهِرْ فَوْكَ عِبَادِهِ وَهُوَ حَكِيمِ الْخَبِيرِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that He is irresistible, or He is uh, supreme over His slaves. And He is the all-wise, the well-acquainted with all things. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is well-acquainted with all things, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Shaykh mentioned that this illustrates the rububiyyatillah, the uh, lordship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that it necessitates his uluhiyya, that all the worship is directed to him. So just to give us an idea about what the Shaykh is mentioning here, because this is constantly... Uh, mentioned by the ulama, this point where the shaykh said, تَقْرِيرْ لِرُبُوبِيَتِهِ مُسْتَلْزِمَ لِأُلُوهِيَتِهِ That affirming Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's lordship, it necessitates his uluhiyya. Tawheedah libadah. Tawheedah rububiyya necessitates tawheedah libadah. How is this? So the shaykh goes on to mention that for example, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his, his, his power over all things and over all things and his lordship and his, his uh, rulership over everyone and his, uh, his knowledge over uh, his knowledge of everything, it necessitates that you direct all of your worship to him. Meaning that, that so that's how Tawheed a rububiyyah necessitates tawheed al uluhiyya because all of those things rec recognizing acknowledging the lordship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he is knowledge of all things that he is the he has power over all things that this necessitates obedience to him and asking from him and that he is the lord over all things his 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 governance of all things. And this also illustrates and necessitates the falsehood of the uh, control or the governance of other than him. And that there is no one who deserves to be worshipped except him. So these are just some of the benefits the Shaykh mentioned with regards to this ayat. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us to gain benefit and bless us to use the bounties that Allah has given us from our hearing and our sight and our intellect, our minds and our body for obedience to Allah. And something I want to add that I, I just heard in a, uh, a lecture which was very beneficial, a good reminder, is that the, the individual mentioned that any time a person does obedience, we already, everyone knows that things are haram and we should stay away from those things. But any time 
we do obedience to Allah, we use his bounties to do disobedience. We use the very bounties Allah has blessed us with to do disobedience to him. For example, you use your eyes, which are a great blessing. All of us would say they're thankful for their eyes if they're able to see. They're, they're thankful. But we don't really show our thanks because we use our eyes to look at the haram. And we're grateful for our hearing. But we're not truly, truly grateful because we use our hearing to listen to the haram. And we are grateful to the degree that we're grateful over having our limbs, having the function to be able to, to uh, hold your, your bowels in, akramakum Allah, to be able to, uh, to be able to walk and communicate, physical communication and, and visit people and, and, and walk and, and lift things and, and, and function. But yet we use those very limbs also for disobedience to Allah, to show ungratefulness to, for those very limbs that Allah has given us. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us and bless us with عَمْلَ نَافِرَسْكَنْ طَيِّبُ وَعَمْلَ مُتَّقَبِّلٍ وَصَلَى اللَّهُ وَسَلَمَ عَلَى نَبِيِّنَّ مُحَم